McCorm versus Fertalis Speaking! Guys, McCorm, if you were been warned, you had one shot at Ash Demon Abyss. And listen, you're gonna regret that you missed. I'm a life vacuum in the builder of your tomb. To this world doom, I'm blazing some boom. You're going to try and fight history. The only history is what you will be. Welcome back to trade. They were very brave. Now every man, woman, and child lays burnt and ashen in a grave. Can you imagine though? God, I wish I had any actual musical talent and could actually do a Monster Hunter rap battle. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Sunbreakers all. I have a question to ask you. How actually powerful is Geismagorm? How actually threatening, actually dangerous, how would he fare in a matchup with a black dragon? The Dark Abyss Dragon, the Abyssal Archdemon, Archdemon of the Abyss, monstrous, powerful, a swarm of blood and death at his command. But would he find himself swept aside in the face of true power? Or would he rise to meet it? Before we talk for Tellus, oh yes, it's time to talk Guys Magon, and if he's well got the pedigree to back up a claim to one of the strongest monsters, or if he's actually just a bit Guys Magonless when it comes to battle. <laughs> It's been too long since I've I got into some proper lore, so I am very excited for this. Guys, McGorm, then. We know he's got the same general shape as something like Gogmazios, but without, of course, the wings. The extra pair of arms, Alamagalus 2, that type of frame. This gives him a lot of extra purchase, which he definitely needs, as a lot of his attacks have a lot of explosive power. Power. He has to deal with essentially what amounts to a lot of recoil and having an extra diddly pair of basically T-Rex arms but in legs form gives him an extra bit of grip on the ground, which already plays into just how potent his sun explosions actually are if he does need this kind of frame and shape to properly cope with dishing them out. That's already quite the point in his favor, but also what did I just say? His sun explosions. Now look, calling them sun is of course hyperbolic. If they were actually sun, he'd summon them and instantly die. But he certainly has quite a bit of literal firepower to him. Firepower that is not just fueled by himself, but fueled by the life energy of hundreds, if not thousands, of monsters that his personal swarm have slain and delivered him. That is quite the overcharge amp of energy, and I imagine it's quite similar to Xenojiva absorbing the dragon, elder dragon essence in the new world as they come to die, and that general bioenergy current that seems to flow through the Monster Hunter world and the flora and fauna within it. So that's quite cool to see that extended upon. He has these red crystals on that we break off in the first phase. They are actually the Curio in clumps giving him pseudo armor and that's why we first chip away at them to get to the flesh underneath, which is very neat too. He's got this multi mouth with a barbed tongue that very much looks like if it got a hold of you, it's not going to let go anytime soon and that is going to be painful as it gnaws away at you. Though that said, he's not exactly bristling with the world's most dangerous set of teeth, it's just kind of a normal set of teeth for a monster that size, but he certainly has got quite the claw and paw to do some swiping. But he's not that fast, he has the strength that something of his bulk would have, but he's not especially physically intimidating for his size. He's no Akantor snapping a Gravios. Oh! Gets me every time. But, you know, he's no small fry when it comes to just the sheer bulk of him. He could just lie on a lot of monsters and that would be lights out. Obviously, we have his ultimate attack, that massive laser, that massive explosion. One of the largest, most fiercely fiery explosions we've ever seen in Monster Hunter. Definitely up there in, I would say, probably top 20 or so strongest attacks we've seen in the series. It's no Sapphire of the Emperor, but most things are not walking away from that. 
And I think one of the greatest features that Mr. Geismagon certainly has is his endurance, his tankiness, his beefiness. Because look, ah, Mr. Admiral Gallius is all about that. Sorry, was that supposed to hurt? <laughs> because yes, he flinches, but make no mistake, Guys McGon has tanked not one, not two, not three, not four, but five Dragonators, of which some of them have exploded while embedded in him, and he's just fine. He's not even really injured from them. The hunter, us, does all the work. The Dragonators just piss it off more than anything. That is incredibly impressive considering a Dragonator is a genuinely threatening weapon to even Fatalis. That is very cool to see. Though whether the Dragonator is threatening to Fatalis is another question entirely. The non-canon Monster Hunter early on fights against him had the double Dragonator and of course the one in Shrade in Icebawn has the double Dragonator and it suddenly hurts him but also Fatalis destroyed Shrade and they had Dragonator technology so perhaps it's a case of they never connected or if they did he did shrug it off too But in any case guys McGon has certainly got uh, the health to back up his claim as one of the strongest monsters He's also got the reputation and he's got the history and that history is that 50 years ago, he almost destroyed the kingdom, the homeland of our lovely Sunbreak characters. We know this both through word of mouth and the whole legend of the Curios, the mislabeling of Malzano, and we see indeed a representation of it on the title screen with Guys Magon's creepy eyes being like, Wait, 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 can, can, can you see me? Wait, wait, you, oh, you can see me! And of course, his big meaty paw, aforementionedly, is there hanging out too. And of course, the kingdom is veritably on fire. Malzano up above, again mislabeled as the actual cause, is in actuality there to fight Guys McGon as he wanted to do in the Sunbreak storyline, and we didn't understand that till too late. So that's really neat. But all of this aside, right, this very quick rundown of Guys McGoniness is kind of pointless because it pales in comparison to his greatest weapon. The Curios, the Swarm, a thousand upon thousand upon thousand endless legion of biting, gnawing, blood-sucking death leeches uh, that take the very essence of the monsters they feast on, the land blanketed in them and drained dry before delivering it to their master. Outside of the power-up said master gets from it, the fact that the Curios themselves exist is ridiculous. They are a cheat code. Well, what do I mean? Take a ant, a lowly ant, tiny though, of course, very powerful for its size. Good old ant. Who would win in a fight? An ant or a giant scorpion or a lizard? Obviously, the scorpion or lizard. But then ask the question, who would win in a fight? A million ants or a lizard? Or a giant scorpion or other some such large creature. Every time, without contest, without mercy, horrifyingly, the swarm of ants. And the large creature can do nothing to stop it. There is too many, they are too small, and they can only sit there and draw their last breath in pain as they are taken apart at the behest of an infinite mass of tiny sharp mouths. And that is the Curios in Monster Hunter. We see it with Anjanath. And that's not even that many Curios. We see it all around throughout the story. So when Geismagon, outside of himself, can essentially command a what feels overwhelmingly endless swarm of Curios to descend and devour upon anything it's actually up against, that is one serious weapon, and it would take one serious opponent to actually not instantly lose to it. 
So on top of that then, the Curios seem very resistant to things that arguably should, well, really hard counter them. There is an afflicted Zenoga, a Zenoga that is a walking bug zapper with a walking field of electricity that can surround himself with deadly voltage. Somehow, he has been Curio swarmed, both afflicted and the dead one on that really badass initial blood Lunagaron hunt. That's kind of scary. There's an afflicted Magmelmadron. He can literally burrow in lava and volcanic rock, and yet still the Curios got him. In fact, in every environment, in every weather, in every extreme of temperature, terrain, or atmosphere, the Curios are there, and they have descended and turned the monsters crazy. They are resilient, and they are powerful, and they are all loyal to an almighty Elder Dragon named Geismagon. So yes, Geismagon Geismagon is ridiculous. He is utterly ridiculous. It's like how Shagaru by himself, yeah, really powerful, okay, but the frenzy on top? Oh, alright, yep, one of the greatest threats that could be in the monster world, holy shit, how do we stop this? And that's really terrifying for an end boss to have. So the question then becomes, well, as I posed early on, could Geismagon have any kind of chance against Fatalis? Well, make no mistake, I think Geismagon comfortably fits into the top 10 strongest monsters ever. Take away the Curio Swarm, he probably drops to top 30. But with the Curio Swarm, which is fair to give him because it's literally his thing, he really is up there. Anything that has no immediate defense is pretty much just going to die to the swarm. Now, Vitalis' scales, his fire, his heat, that is a pretty effective defense. They're going to have a hard time biting through him. He is a black dragon. I doubt very much he is going to be affected by uh, said, uh, well, afflicted poison virus, whatever it is they do to the monster, the poison that afflicted, uh, fear rain that the curios do to make an afflicted creature, or if it does go into his system, he's probably going to overcome it pretty quickly, kind of frenzy style, because again, he is a black dragon and has that indomitable power. But they're still going to definitely annoy him. They can bite eyes, they can swarm down his mouth, which is uh, imagery, and generally be right annoying. The thing is, though, I don't see Guys McGon surviving many big burns. I don't see the swarm surviving many big burns. Certainly enough of the swarm will, but just that level of intensity of flame uh, that uh, Fatalis commands is definitely a threat. Though the thing is, Guys McGon is similarly fiery in nature, and the Curio clearly don't mind. Now, there's no way Guys McGon's flame matches Fatalis, but it definitely does show that the Curios have somewhat of a tolerance of fire, as does their afflicting of volcanic monsters in volcanic regions. So, ultimately, I think that if a Fatalis stood there and didn't do anything, and there was a Curio Swarm around him, and we just kind of let that happen for long enough, they would eventually take him down as they would any living creature. But I also think that a Fatalis reeved in Fatalis fire is pretty much untouchable to said swarm. But how readable is he in his own flame? It comes out of his mouth, he can twist his neck round, can he bathe himself in it that effectively? When he heats up and goes supernova, perhaps at that point he just becomes too hot to touch literally for the curios? It's very difficult. I think quite comfortably Fatalis beats Guys McGon in a 1v1 if we take away the swarm. Add back in the curios, and I would say it's probably yeah, three times out of ten, Guys McGon comes out on top which, make no mistake, is incredibly impressive and makes him one of the strongest end bosses ever if he has any chance at all at taking on a black dragon. And I think that's fair enough for something hyped up as quite literally a demon that almost achieved the same thing as Fatalis in destroying a civilization, albeit not as completely as Fatalis did and albeit a weaker civilization, but still that is pretty impressive. That's kind of where my thoughts lie, but I thought this would be a little bit of a fun exercise just to properly examine Mr. Guys and how good he is, and I would love to know you guys' McGorm's thoughts <laughs> on the matter too, as that's always a good time. Like you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Let me know if you'd like more little lore musings to return. Consider supporting the future of this channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye.
Yeah. Josh Cotton and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is uh, goodbye <laughs>